Good afternoon. How are we doing? I was hoping for more verbal response. How are we doing? All right. Yes, I'm Ron. I lead Ambient Performance. We're based here in London, as well as Coventry at the Serious Games Institute. You might not have guessed because of the accent. Uh, I've been here about seven years. And uh, as in the interest of full disclosure, uh, we are also the uh, European distributor of the Forterra Olive Virtual World Platform, which I want to use as a backdrop to discuss collaborative contextual learning and performance support, and to do that by doing a live demonstration with uh, several role players. We'll see how many are in world with us here, a couple anyway. And uh, if you can just give me a moment, I'll jack into that and tell you what it is that we're going to see. What we're going to see is uh, some live E, uh, live learning uh, scenarios and collaborative learning in a couple different contexts. We'll ask these guys some questions. We'll see uh, learning in a retail store as well. And then we'll talk about how you can bring e-learning and performance support into these uh, worlds. And we'll be able to ask these guys a bunch of questions as well. So let me figure out who I'm going to join here. Hi, gang. Where is it that we're going to uh, do the demo today? Uh, yes, if you would just go to the Presence tab and just teleport to Steve. Excellent idea. Not seeing Steve's name in here. Do you guys see it? So who else? Like Kura, maybe? Yeah, you can do Kura. It's fine. Okay. Oh, you know what? Steve changes his name. <laughs> Which you can do. So we'll just teleport over there, and here we are. I'm back. Thanks, Callie. Hello, Steve. I mean, Peter. Well, good morning, Mr. Edwards. How are you doing this fine day? Fabulous. Thank you. Are you guys about ready? Because we are. Oh, sure. We're, we're ready to go. OK. Will you kick us off, or uh, maybe perhaps Joe will, um, either of you, uh, tell us what it is that we're going to see, just build a little context for what it is that we're looking at, and, uh, and I'll hand it over to you. Sure, no problem. We can have Joe go there and plant himself in a chair. And What we're going to be running through is just a small little new hire onboarding orientation and training seminar here in the glorious world of Olive. And then we... Uh, wrap it up by doing a, a virtual run through of uh, one of our Maui Outdoor surf shops. So whenever you're ready, Mr. Edwards, we can commence. Great. You guys, you guys ready? They say they're ready. Let's do it. We are indeed ready. Okay. I'll just kind of back away here. All right. Excellent. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Maui Outdoors 2009 New Hire Orientation and Training Seminar. My name is Peter Staymates, and I'm the VP of Retail Store Operations. And for myself and on behalf of Maui Outdoors, I would just like to state how excited we are to have you all here today joining our young, growing company. Now, before I jump in and run through the presentation and give you an idea of what you're in for today, I thought it might be nice to have a few introductions and let some of you introduce yourselves so we can figure out who you are and where you're coming from. So why don't we start with this table here in front of me. Well, ladies first. Hi, um, my name is Kura, and I'm coming to you from our New York City store. Oh, that's a big store. Excellent. Welcome. All right, who else do we have there at that front table? Don't be shy. Oh, my name's Larry, and I live in Vancouver, Washington, but I work in the Portland, Oregon store. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Welcome, Larry. And who else do we have here at the front table? Hi, I'm Dane, and I'm coming to you from Snow, Snow Sockton, Indianapolis, blizzard capital of the world. <laughs> okay, so you can stock up on those parkas. That's excellent. Okay, well, we're going to have plenty of time for the rest of us to meet and greet each other as the day progresses. So what I want to do right now is just give you a quick run-through of what you're going to be in store for today. So there are six modules you're going to be running through. Each module is one hour long, and we're going to be breaking into smaller groups for each of the modules. And the first module that we're going to be going over is company culture, human resource policies, and computer store, op store computer operations. Next module 
is sales, and third is customer service. Fourth and fifth modules are product training. That's where we have vendors from our top 10 lines come in, summarizing their product line and positioning. It gives you a good opportunity to uh, get to know some of those folks as well. So the sixth module is really cool. This is where we put you through a virtual example of one of our stores where you actually get to apply some of the training that you've gone through today. And last but not least, we have our cocktail mixer at Curra's right down the street, a little social event for everyone here. So before we break off into smaller groups, do we have any questions from anyone? Um, actually, I do. Yes, Curra. Yes, well, Peter, um, you know, uh, I really like the uh, products that, that you offer for Maui Outdoors. I mean, I think they're really, really great. But I was wondering, by any chance, do we get any kind of employee discount? The important questions in an orientation. That is an excellent question and one that will be covered in the human resource policy section. But uh, I'll just state, yes, we do encourage employees to buy as much of our products as possible. Just, you know, leave a few scraps on the, on the shelves for the customers. So any more questions at this point? <laughs> okay, so if there are no further questions, why don't we break off into our smaller groups. We'll have the first table here head off to meet Jim Gables out there in the back at the end table, and he will run you through some customer service skills. And once again, I'd like to welcome you all to Maui Outdoors. So this will be an example of a, a small breakout. We could go to a different room or I'll um, be in all right, everybody, around these uh, tables here. Come on here. over and take a seat, and we'll get started. We'll let them take a seat. And it's spatial audio, so the people on the far side of the room wouldn't be able to hear this table here, unless you wanted them to. All right. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Jim Gables. I'm the uh, customer service skills trainer for Maui Outdoors. As you probably heard from Peter, this module will last about an hour. You'll learn the course of customer service skills that have made Maui Outdoors the number one most respected beach-oriented sporting goods store in the United States. To start, I'd like to ask why you like shopping with certain companies. Why do you go there? Sam, what do you think? Well, I don't know. I feel good about the experience I have when I go there, I guess. Okay, good. And what gives you that good experience? I mean, to start, it seems that all the associates are nice and helpful, not just one or two of them. Okay, good. So you're saying that they're interested in you and not just trying to sell you something. Is that about right? Yeah, that's, that's what really makes a difference for me, yes. All right, great. Um, Sam, you just explained the first two core customer service principles that are the foundation for how to deliver an excellent customer experience on a consistent basis. Here at Maui Outdoors, we feel our brand must deliver that um, every day. The principle I'm talking about is finding a way to develop an emotional relationship with our customers. Now, I'm not talking about dating them or anything like that but rather having our customers feel good about the experience that they have when they visit our store and interact with our associates. But isn't that hard to do when some customers are rude, impatient, and picky? Yes, that's, that's correct, and that's really why we created these training modules, so you'll get a chance to uh, get the tips on how to deal with those difficult situations. And after this module, you'll get a chance to try uh, the new skills that we've learned in a uh, virtual surf shop and deal with a uh, simulated customer service uh, scenario. So if you're all ready, um, we can teleport over to the surf shop and um, try out some of our customer service skills there. Sounds good. Okay, so we're going to teleport over to this uh, surf shop, and then you'll see some contextual learning in, a, in an actual retail store or a virtual retail store. And we'll see a piece of this recorded and then played back for us as well so that people can get feedback instantly as they start to do contextual learning in, in these virtual environments. Okay, sweetheart. I think we Sorry can go late. You know, I'm late. There's waves, a big man. store. Let's go. And a big sink. In we go. Yay. Let's get your prep. So this is a customer service training right. scenario. Well, good morning, sir. I see you looking at the yes. shoes. Is there anything Before, I can help you with? Gone. 
Yeah. Uh, yes, Michelle, I would like to sketch those that you have behind me in the size 9, uh, the red ones. Okay, the red sketchers in a size 9? Sure, I can have that. I noticed a bit of an accent there. I take it you're from France? Can I have Sure, I am from France. Of course, because, okay, excellent. excuse me. Let me go get those in the size 9 and I'll be right back. Excuse yes, me, excuse me. Ma'am, ma 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 I'm with a customer right now. Yes. I'll, be, I'll be right with you. Okay. Well, she Can wants the like pink one. She's I impatient. She well, wants the pink one. No, okay, okay, one. she'll get the pink one. Let me just finish with this customer I've started with, and I'll be right back with you. You see, she needs it now, and then we'll be gone. Okay. We'll be gone give, really give, 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 give me one second, sir. Let me just We're gonna get grab it this right pink. Now, okay, so which one are you looking Mama's at? Mama's little pink. Look at the, one over the pink one, please? The pink one on the bottom, right there. That's the, the one pink one right on the bottom. Right but we don't want the one on the bottom okay. because people well, have been touching that. So if you can get us no, a fresh ma one. No, ma'am, that's fine. Be, uh, no, we don't have any fresh ones. We'll, we'll just give you... Well, there must be a fresh one. Can't you check in the back for me? There has to be a fresh one. I want a clean one, Mommy. You see, she doesn't want any germy ones that everybody else has been touching. So if we can okay, have a well, fresh one, if you just go in the back and get us okay, a fresh one. Okay, let me one. go check out and back. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's stop this scenario right here. Now, Ron, I went ahead and recorded that. I'm going to, do you want me to load it up and play it back, or did you see enough and we can just uh, ask our new, our new hire trainees here how they would have handled the situation if they were in, in my place? Let's ask the audience here. Would you like to see a playback and see how that works? Yeah, thumbs up, thumbs down. Let's see. Uh, they'd like to see it, Sue. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and load the recording. You know how to join it. Yes, sir? Okay. Yes, it's not enough just seeing me once. You have to see me again. <laughs> We're ready? All right, and away we go. Hang on one second, sir. Do I hit play? You should be able to hit play. We might be, um, are, you, are you able to see that or should we just commence with the, uh, we'll just move on. I uh, think. Let's try one more second. Well, I, check I saw here. it come up for two minutes, but I'm, I'm not seeing okay. it. Okay. Maybe reload it. Might, it might be, some, might be something with your connection. Yeah, I've got join, so it could be his connection, you're right. Yeah. We'll try one more okay, time. Let's try and load it again. Yeah, it might be something on your with your connection there. Let's try it again. You can hear a pin drop in here. <laughs> okay, it, let me let me unload this. And it's probably your connection that's if you're not seeing it come up. So so it's probably your connection if you're not seeing it come up. So. Why don't we just commence with the, the QA section here? Okay. Imagine so, the entire scenario played back exactly as it just happened with full audio. Yeah. From you, from yeah any you, perspective. You, you could, yeah, you can describe that to him. I brought um, some sock puppets so, as a backup here, just in case. We can always we, do it again, too. Yeah, we have, we, have, <laughs> we have sock puppets down there on aisle three in the back. Okay. So, um, so now they'll do Jerry, if you were session. in my position, and you were helping a customer and someone else came in and interrupted, how would you have handled that situation? Well, um, in the training they said that we're never um, alone on the sales floor, so I probably would have tried to enlist the help of one of the other employees to help deal with the irate customer. Okay, that's an excellent point. Isa, do you have anything else that you could add to that? Yeah, well, I probably would have kept helping the customer I had too. I mean, she's being rude and stuff. I mean, why would you encourage that behavior? Yeah, those are two very good points. I mean, there are always other employees you could call upon to assist you in the situation. And if you're working with a customer, you want to finish that customer. No matter how rude <coughs> anyone gets with a little child, you want to be able to finish up who you started with. And also, you know, there are people ahead of her that she cut in front of. So I'm glad to see you were paying attention. And uh, you learned the two valuable lessons today. So, any questions from your part, Ron? Okay, well, let's, uh, let's take some from the floor. Uh, what questions do you guys have that we can ask uh, the role players here, or you can ask of me, of course. I just want to open the floor up for questions for a few minutes, and then there's a few more points that I'll make, and then we'll do some more questions. Yes, here in the front. Mm-hmm. So the question is, is this uh, your real voices? 
don't know. Kenny, was that your real voice? Um, not really. I'm just a just an actor from Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. So they, these these are our real voices. Yes. Yeah, uh, normally, except for Kenny. Falsetto. I'm not French. I just play one on all of. And how about Marie? Marie, go and introduce. It is. It is. I'm. I'm actually like like thirty something years <laughs> old, and I live in Tampa, Florida, and I'm a college ah. student here. <laughs> Man, so oh, have a, uh, okay. She Any? does that on her own. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions from the floor? So uh, the question is, do you find the environment easy to use? Yeah. In fact, why don't we defer that question to Kura? Why don't you uh, relate to us your your initial experiences in Olive, and combine that with the massive, you know, computer gaming experience you had prior to coming here. <laughs> yes, my massive computer gaming experience consisted of when I used to be on a Wang, and I found that Adventure was was loaded on it, and that is the that was the extent of my gaming before I came here. Um, so there, it was completely non-existent. And uh, it took me probably about half an hour to feel comfortable walking around in the environment, maneuvering physically around in it. And uh, then probably about another hour, hour and a half to be able to accurately shoot weapons or drive vehicles, things like that. But it, because it is so immersive, you find that very quickly, and it's also r quite intuitive, that you find very quickly you can maneuver and manipulate around it. Um, some people who are gamers use game controllers, and they find that that's great. Uh, for, I think, probably the majority of us here uh, who are role players, we're using mouse and keyboard, and it works out great. Great. Thank you, Kara. Thank you, Kara. Other questions for the role players? Yeah. Yes? So what happens when the connection times out? Uh, I can answer that. What you would see is a, uh, a white screen until it reconnects. Uh, if the latency gets really bad, you might start to hear choppy audio, but it requires really low bandwidth, 128K per user. So it's not something that happens often unless you just simply have a, a bad connection. Is there anything you'd add to that, Steve? No, that, uh, you summed that up quite completely. Great, thanks. Uh, time for one more question for now. Oh, okay. There. Okay, so the, the question is, when you're doing role playing, how do you do some of the more subtle behaviors? So if you could show us some of the uh, gestures like smile or anger or frown, some of these things uh, between uh, Kura and Steve, that would be helpful. So you do have a, a, a level of control over these um, that, that you can show. Yeah, um, you see these buttons along the bottom, these are um, macro buttons, if you will, preset but there are more than 150 different gestures and full control over the facial muscles uh, as well that can be programmed to. So it depends on what it is that you want to want to show. For example, I'll show you to bring up one of the... Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Kara. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> nice. Okay. What I was going to say is, uh, is to show you one of the uh, subtle gestures here. This is a photorealistic avatar of myself, uh, everything except the teeth, mine aren't really that white. <laughs> and one of the gestures I'll use is uh, slash em angry. There we go. So. <laughs> Isn't he cute? Kura, you have angered Ron. <laughs> okay. Uh, does that answer your question? So you do have some control. Thanks. Um, and you have, uh, it's your voice, so you also have voice inflection, of course, and you can uh, certainly practice and do some different things. Thanks, guys. Can I have a, a round of applause for the role players?
Thank you. So uh, that wraps it up here, gang. Um, there's a couple things that I'm going to show them um, and uh, on, uh, on Forterra 1, actually. So uh, that's it. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Bye, everybody. Bye. Go better way. Okay, let's head to Zville. Okay. So he said, uh, let's go to Zville. I don't know if you heard that. And that's a, an empty space where they all go and debrief how this particular exercise went. So I wanted to bring in some live people so you'd actually see some interaction. Otherwise, these are very lonely environments. But let's talk about what you can do with asynchronous uh, e-learning performance support as well. So what you've seen here is collaborative learning. And I can't talk. Uh, like Steve, can't uh, do two things at once. Can't talk and type. So hold on a sec. And I'm logging into one of their older servers uh, that has some e-learning loaded up. I just want to show you how that works. And talk about contextual learning blending these things together. So what you've seen is one of the low-hanging fruits, the easy things that you would think to apply virtual worlds for, like classroom-based learning. It's easy. There's a sage on the stage, people in seats, and there's some different modalities of that. What we can do as well is to bring in blended learning. So blended learning either with a classroom or with a virtual delivery, blending it with your e-learning um, delivery. So what I have here is just another room. Uh, this happens to be a large conference room. We've done the same exercise. But here, what we've done is bring in some e-learning that's contextual. So as the lecturer in front of my imaginary friends here, I can bring up um, a series of lessons and assign them to everybody in the room or specific people. So in this case, I have developing employees. It's some off-the-shelf content from Harvard Business School Publishing, some friends of ours. And I can either view it myself or I can broadcast it to the group. I'm going to go ahead, because there's nobody here, just view it. And what you'll see is, uh, Olive will split screen. So I, we still have all the interaction of the avatars blended with uh, e-learning. Now e-learning, like I said, is contextual based on what it is that you're doing, or it can just be attached to objects. For example, if you're on an oil rig and you're about to do a live exercise with people, you might need to know about a piece of equipment. This learning can be tied actually to the, the kit. So it does a bit of scre uh, split screen like this. And I just play, yeah, this pulls right out of your LMS. Jack started as director of research at Rose Green and Bloom LLC, a statistical analysis firm. So, so you get the idea. This will pull up any SCORM compatible e-learning. But what we can do now with this latest release, the one we were just using, is bring in any web-based content. So it could be your EPSS, your performance support. It could be e-learning either off the shelf or the things that you're building. And now you've got a way to bring that into the virtual world and either attach it to objects or to have sessions. And it's exactly what we're about to do is to start delivering instructor-led training in these environments for a large training company. We currently deliver 14,000 training events a year with some 1,500 trainers. Well, their clients want to cut costs, cut carbon, and, uh, and, and be more efficient. So virtual delivery is one of the ways that we can do that. And we can tie in uh, pr uh, job support, performance support, these kinds of things, as well as e-learning. But here, it'll be led by live instructors, the same instructors they'd have in a physical classroom. So of course, there's some things that we need to pilot and finesse to get right in terms of how long can you sit in a virtual classroom? Is it longer or shorter than a real classroom, for example? How do you break up the content? More importantly, though, what is it about these virtual environments that enable us to do something that we couldn't do before? So classroom-based learning is one of the most boring things that we can do in these environments. Instead, we could go to the deck of a destroyer or an oil rig or whatever is uh, germane to our business. So here's an example of an outdoor scene. Not all of us need to learn how to fire these things. Perhaps it's an oil rig that, that's of interest. So glad they alphabetized these in the latest release. And as we talk about collaboration and making it easier, this old interface doesn't have the nice buttons, if you remember, in the upper left, which simply said screen. Put a screen right here and deliver a, a presentation. And, but I could certainly do that. So now we have contextual learning. I can attach it to objects. Um, and before we do an evacuation drill of an oil rig, I, we, we could have that learning blended together. Why I wanted to show you this model is uh, our um, friends at Caspian Learning who have a booth downstairs are also uh, actually they actually loaned us this oil rig because we have interoperability with other game platforms and modeling we're able to take an oil rig they use for their simulations and put it into ours and cut the development time 
And this reuse of assets is really important uh, to the industry. So those are the things that, that I wanted to share with you. Just generally speaking, uh, top line, what do these worlds look, uh, how do these worlds look? How are they being used currently? Uh, what are some of the different features? And how do you start to blend classroom, virtual classroom, and your e-learning content to have an end-to-end -end, uh, training and, and simulation uh, solution? So what I'd like to do now with the remaining couple minutes is just open it up to questions uh, with you guys.